Hi everyone, here's the book Chemist once again and today I'll be talking about The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. A gritty novel about a few unfortunate characters living in some of the most terrible and atrocious corners of contemporary American life. I found the novel incredibly abrasive and impactful. It's the kind of book that rubs off on you. And uh, when I finished it that same afternoon, I, I took a walk around the city center in my English town, and I found myself looking at the people around me, looking at passersby, and thinking, mm, I wonder what city pursuit you engage in, in the solitude of your own home. You sick fuck. Mars Room is an incredibly fast novel. It's brilliantly structured to reveal just enough about the characters to make you wish to learn more about them, and it's built up of a succession of very short passages, rarely longer than one or two pages, that keep jump he keep jumping here and there and always keep you interested in progressive progressing the action of the novel uh, these passages in particular keep jumping between the present the novel's present where uh, the protagonist Romy Ho uh, finds herself in a California prison and her past and the story of her youth of how she grew up in San Francisco Romy Hall is the protagonist of the book. Most of the novel follows her through, uh, through first-person chapters narrated by her, and you get to experience her life through her own perspective. But you also get a few chapters that follow other characters through an external focalization. And these chapters never distract you from the main flow of the novel. They're never annoying or boring, mostly because they tend to be very brief. There is never really the chance to get bored with uh, The Mars Room. I read it in a couple of days, and I am positive that it will take you roughly the same amount of time, if not less, just because it is that gripping and that fast-paced. Without revealing too much about Romy's past and her personal story, I will say that she grew up, as I said, in San Francisco, and that as a young person she had a certain penchant for, let's say, unwholesome pursuits, for doing drugs, uh, wasting time with her friends, shoplifting, and so on and so forth. And one of the brilliant things in the novel is the way you truly get to experience the contradictory feelings that Romy harbors for her hometown and for her friends. On the one hand, when, when it comes to San Francisco, uh, Romy is quite is well aware that there's a great evil in her hometown in its lack of opportunities, in its systematic oppression uh, in this predatory town where adults, drug dealers, are constantly preying on the weak-minded, on kids, a place rich in violence, rich in all sorts of um, of terrible, really, systems of confrontation and oppression. She knows that the city is plagued by all, by all of these problems, but at the same time you can truly experience her love of the place, and, and at times this love really shines through as something truly beautiful. It's the type of under your skin, um, almost involuntary love that you come to experience and to, to, to harbor for your hometown, for the place you grew up in, no matter how messed up that place was. And this same feeling, a very similar feeling, it is what she experiences, what Romy experiences when it comes to her friends, in particular Eva, uh, a childhood friend of hers, who uh, is quite a, an important character in the novel, I think, because Eva is in many ways a horrible person. As a young woman, Eva is aggressive, confrontational, violent, violently self-harmful, uh, very much of a, of a difficult person to be, to be friends with. But at the same time, there is a certain element of beauty inside her, as inside all of us, that Romy finds truly compelling. And it's clear again that Romy is aware of how much, of, of all the problems that Heva experienced as a kid and the even more terrible problems that she would live through uh, as an adult, but still harbors these this deep feelings. It's, uh, Eva is not the Dean Moriarty to Romy's um, cell paradise. She is not idolized as this 
uh, innocent but doomed figure. Instead, the novel just conveys these types of almost helpless feelings that bind these characters together. I guess what the novel does with the, all these characters is suspend its judgment, really. And that's a very important point for a novel like this. See, when you read about the life that Romy led in San Francisco, uh, uh, this life in a place of shops selling cheap shit, uh, fast food parlors, um, drugs everywhere, unemployment, what is really difficult to see is precisely how her, how her life, the life Romy led and her friends led, could really have gone very differently than how it did. This life was planned from the start to doom her and her friends to end up in this terrible situations that they then have to face and it's difficult to shake the awareness that the reason why she ended up in prison and why many of her friends ended up in prison is because the odds were stacked against her from the start. I'm not saying this to offer an apology of drug usage or, or crime. I'm a very polite boy from Monza who never even smoked a cigarette. What I'm saying is that the novel truly and beautifully exposes how these systems and the environment in which these characters grow up really offer them a truly terrible hand at life. And it's almost silly to hope that they could have done something very different with their life than what they actually did. This is very important, it's truly very important, because The Marsh Room is first and foremost a prison novel. And one of the concepts that's presented time and again in the book. It's especially espoused by one of the prison guards, which I think, who I think is called Jones, is this idea that these, pres these, per these people, uh, Romy and her fellow prisoners, are in prison, they are convicts, because they made a choice. Um, they made a choice to commit crimes and end up in jail, and if they'd wanted to have a normal life, if they'd wanted to be treated like dignified humans, they should have made a different choice. This is a very simple and very charming story. You hear it time and again in conservative arguments across the world, but doesn't bear much of a relation to the reality of things. The reality of things is that these people, because of the lives they had to live since they were children, were only ever offered very narrow options. And very often even these few narrow options felt rigged from the start because of racial uh, prejudice, because of the lack of opportunities they had growing up for uh, attending certain types of school, securing certain types of jobs, going to the heroic effort that it really would have taken them as kids to detach themselves from the reality they were born in. It was just not a possibility. And this, by the way, is not really... I, I really don't think that the point of the novel is necessarily to simply say, oh, let's, uh, let's you know, excuse these people or... or, or let's take the blame away from these people because it wasn't their fault that they committed these crimes, it, it was about the environment. I don't think the novel is really concerned with placing blame on, on somebody or another. What stories such as The Mars Room do by showing these types of dynamics is simply placing us in front of the way our societies work and saying, look, this is the state of things and the way things work in certain corners of our society means mean that the people living there are almost doomed from the start. And until we change things, we are just going to create more convicts and we are playing a part. We are responsible, in a way, for creating and dooming these new generations. Here, too, is a brilliant feature of the Mars Room, showing how these future convicts are almost trained to prison life from the start. On the one hand, because they grow up in communities where so many people are incarcerated, that prison stops becoming something that... where you might end up if you commit a mistake. It almost becomes an obligatory step in the course of your life. 
And on the other hand, it shows how many of the other institutions that belong to supposed free society are not really in opposition to prison life. Prison is not something external to society. If anything, it's a bit of a continuation of society. School and some forms of employment are compared directly to prison, and prison life itself feels very much like just an extreme version of the same types of practices that dictate the lives of these people. It's a place where you have to work for a pittance in order to afford ship, ch cheap shit that doesn't really benefit you as much as the people who are selling it to you. It's a place of brutality and injustice where infractions are punished swiftly and unjustly and where the system cares absolutely nothing for the motives of whoever has committed this injustice, where the nuances of experience and of, of people's lives are just eliminated in favor of a, of a very strict system of punishment. The Mars Room is also brilliant in pointing to some of the cultural roots that create this violent, confrontational, aggressive culture that, so, that just creates the perfect conditions to breed new convicts. In, one, in, a, in a really brilliant chapter, um, there is a long description of a country music show on TV with Richard Nixon, of all people, as a guest um, star uh, in the show, and where the book very brilliantly dissects the lyrics of these country songs and the attitudes of these country songs to expose the deep violence and misogyny at their heart and how all of these songs seem to promote a, a, an idea of American culture that is steeped in these concepts of violence and, and, and constant internal struggle. Mars Room is a really impactful novel, it's brilliantly written, it even manages to be funny at times in spite of its gritty and depressing subject. If I have a criticism of the book, and um, I'll say from the start that it's a silly criticism, is that at times I wished it were more ambitious. Because it's so very fast and because its sections are so very brief and it, it jumps here and there all the time, it felt at times like it had very little time to go more in depth within the psyche of some of its characters or to expand more some of the themes that it touches upon without really dwelling upon them in, uh, at length. There's definitely something going on in the book about the relationship between the American landscape and our modern lives and how alienated we have become with the, the natural world, definitely in the US, but I think this extends most of, possibly to the rest of the world, really. There's definitely something there, but it felt more like that side of the novel was drafted more than truly explored to its full benefit. Uh, similarly, the chapters following the, the secondary characters were not Romy. I th I, I'm not sure the novel would have lost much if these had been dropped, and I wish they'd been developed better or that that space had been developed to further enriching the story of Romy. But again, it's a silly, com it's a silly criticism. Uh, it's almost as complaining about your music record because you wish it were a different genre. I know that that wasn't really the book um, Rachel Kushner was writing here. The reason why I probably am, uh, I, I complain about this, is that the book reminded me a lot of my experience with authors such as John DeLillo or Paul Oster, authors who write these books that cast a light on some of the most absurd and horrible corners of contemporary life and write these short books that are, are very gripping and are very impactful and really shocking, but that sometimes I struggle to retain much because they go for such a fast pace, I struggle to internalize them enough that I find them following me for, say, months or years after the original reading. That's an even sillier criticism. I'm complaining about a problem that might occur with the book in the future, and, and I'm not even sure it will. But I'm just curious to see if anybody out there had the same uh, feeling that maybe they wanted the novel to, to go a bit more in-depth, to, to, to grow a bit richer, uh, and to 
dare be boring <laughs> here and there perhaps. That's not to take anything away from the Mars Room, which was an addictive and important read that I absolutely recommend and that I'm sure you are going to love if you are up for a, a strong and a, a moving book. I really look forward to hearing what you think. I know I haven't been replying to comments as often as I used to uh, lately. I've been really busy, but I will read them. I do read them all, and I swear I, I do enjoy discussing all of these books in the comments. It's the reason why I film this review and, and post them. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the YouTube channel, and have a great afternoon. Bye, everyone.